Matt Mike here at Southwest University Park, joined by Chihuahua's manager, Pat Murphy. Thank you so much for your time and spending time with me. My pleasure, man. My pleasure. So you're a new, uh, northeast guy, I am. born and raised in yeah. uh, Syracuse. I'm from Rochester, and I know yeah. how, how hard it is to play baseball up there. You know, the snow, battling the elements. When playing baseball up there, how'd you guys, you know, prepare for mental toughness? That must have helped a lot. Well, I think, you know, anybody that grows up in the Northeast knows that you don't complain or explain or make excuses, you know, that's what it is. We don't know anything different. And it was easy playing baseball up there because we loved it and uh, we went after it. And maybe we didn't have the best fields. Maybe we didn't have the most opportunities, but you know, we just love the game, man. We wanted to play. We go out and, as kids and, you know, have one ball taped up one bat, nailed together. It was way too big for us, and we'd play all day. Uh, we just, we loved the game. Then you went down to Florida, went to Florida Atlanta University, played baseball there, and had a tremendous career. You actually got inducted to the Hall of Fame in 2008. You were a pitcher, catcher, infielder. Was there a specific position that you liked most? I pitched all my life, you know, and I, I just, since the time I was eight years old, all I ever did was pitch and play a position, but I was always known as a guy that was gonna pitch. and. I guess I swung the bat okay for that level and uh, got the opportunity to do that both in college. And, um, and I wasn't very good, but I, I tried hard. What did it mean to you to be inducted to the Hall of Fame at Florida Atlantic? You know, anytime these things happen, you know, uh, your high school Hall of Fame or the local Hall of Fame, whatever, you keep it in perspective. You know, it's, it's you know, usually because of your teammates and because of the guys and a coaching situation, because of the guys around you that make it. Um, make it possible and you don't take yourself too seriously when that happens you know you just realize that okay it's my time to go through the Hall of Fame thing so you do it but uh, it's great just being with a bunch of different people. Now switching gears from your playing career to your coaching career you had, um, your first gig was at Maryville College and what was the biggest transition going from playing baseball to coaching it? I was so young I was still playing in the minor leagues when I was coaching in college and uh, I was clueless you know I didn't know anything about coaching but I had a passion to help people but I didn't know anything about coaching or teaching or anything else. But um, because I was so passionate about it, I think it helped me at least, get, you know, get across to the players that you know I cared about them. I wasn't some Decepticon. You know, <laughs> I cared about them. Yeah. Then you took um, went down to South Bend, coached at Notre Dame, and you built that program from bottom up. And what was your favorite memory at South Bend? Well, I mean, the day getting the job was, was really special. Uh, my first day on the job, I had an experience with Lou Holtz that I tell a lot when I go out and speak. And uh, it was just wonderful to be around such a great tradition. And it did so much for me. I didn't know anything about coaching still. I wasn't a very good coach, but I got that opportunity, you know, and, and you know, it all worked out well. And people gave me the credit, but truly I had great people. I had a great university and the magnetism of Notre Dame, you know, exponentially things grow and uh, I was very fortunate very lucky now fun fact for you Chihuahuas fans in 92 93 and 94 Notre Dame went to uh, the regionals the only feat to do that Texas so it's pretty it's quite an accomplishment then you went down to Arizona State had a tremendous career there and the relationship that you build with your players you coach Travis Buck here with um, El Paso Brooks Conrad you coach them at ASU too you make it look so easy building that relationship how do you do it well, they know I'm not very smart, so it's easy for them to <laughs> want to come and talk to me. But no, I, I, it's just more about um, when they know you love them. It sounds funny, man, but the, when they know you love them and you actually care about them, that's what makes them want to, you know, trust you. And uh, I've, that, that's the most important thing in my life. In this profession, the most important thing is, you know, my relationship with players and trying to help them any way I can. And there's plenty of guys that despise me and don't want to be around me and, and I might have screwed up some you know what I mean I might have not handled their situation right but I accept that and want to move forward and, and you know try to help every guy I can and it, and it starts with that kid is somebody's Kai Joseph my son you know so if you look at it like how would I want somebody to treat my son in this situation so I try to give them all I got. Yep. Now I have to bring up the streak when you were at ASU. I have to read this one off. It's got a lot of, a lot of stats in it. On, eight, on February 15, 2004, the Sun Devils were shut out, um, and that was their first shutout loss to Oklahoma. Uh, that was an endured 506 games. And previously, they went 338 wins, 
167 losses, one tie during that nine-year streak, aver averaging nine runs per game. Now, they beat the previous record held by Coastal Carolina, which was 349 on April 7, 2001, exactly six years to the day when the Devils last suffered their offensive shutout. Now, you guys faced some incredible pitchers, Barry Zito from USC, Jared Weaver, Long, you know, Long Beach State guy. Did you ever know what you were accomplishing at the, during that time? I didn't know for a long time, and then somebody gave me a stat one day saying, hey, you know, you guys haven't been shut out in like seven years. You know, the record right. is, and I'm like, well, I, we don't talk about stuff like that. Right. You know, we just want to go out and, and play every pitch, and every inning's important, every out's important. And, you know, I will say, Arizona State was a very offensive place to play, yeah. and it lend itself to scoring runs. Yeah. So, um, and when you got the opportunity to recruit the type of players we did, and and play the schedule we did, face the pitchers we did. It's pretty tough in that era of college baseball to shut anybody out. But the fact that we blew the record away by some 300 games or whatever, 200 games, um, is a credit to the players that were there. I mean, they they were relentless. And um, you know, when the record happened, when it was broken, we were we weren't thinking about the record. You know, we were thinking about losing that game. And I think that's the type of attitude that helped those guys accomplish that. Now, from college to professionally, what's the, been the biggest transition, coaching at the collegiate level to now at the pro level? Well, it's, it's way different. I mean, um, you're not in control of, of everything that you were in control of in college. You, here, you have a farm director, you have field coordinator, you have your assistant general managers, and they're all looking at it from 30,000 feet and seeing what's best for the whole organization, and then the AAA team, AA team, single A team. And, you know, I have a very limited scope here in what I need to accomplish. But it isn't any different in that it's about relationships with people and getting them to find their best self. So there's some similarities. It's uh, a lot less work, but it's a different type of work. And I enjoy I enjoyed this age player, player that's been to the big leagues and, and or has got a chance and they're, they've been through a lot of stuff. And to me, that's the time that you can get to them. Now, final question before we let you go. When it's all said and done, and you stop managing, what will you take away from this game? Well, I hope that, you know, I've given just a, you know, I'm a pimple on the, the body of this uh, uh, world called baseball, and I'm just fortunate that I came in. But what I'll take away uh, most importantly is relationships, you know, friends and people that I met and experiences of seeing people accomplish great things and seeing people go from not thinking they could do it to being all-stars, you know what I mean? To me, those memories and those people and watching them do that is such a great experience and hopefully I can pass that on to my family and they can pass it on just to see what a great game this is and, and see how it changes lives and helps people believe in themselves and it really does a lot of good in the world and you know, for me, uh, you know, what I take away is all those experiences. I mean, that's what it's really all about. Thank you so much for uh, spending some time with me. My pleasure, man, my pleasure.